Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go through web design fundamentals where I'm going to show you how to set up your web page and format it in an artistic, creative way. We're going to go through HTML and CSS basics so you guys can understand how to design and format your website. It's a lot of fun and it's the fundamentals to teaching you how to become a web developer. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start off by going a quick overview of, of web development and the different uh, coding languages for web development. There's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that are all commonly used. Uh, HTML would be the framework, and kind of if you have the house metaphor, this would be uh, kind of where things go and the structure and the foundation of your web development. The CSS is more the painting of the house and the design and the aesthetics. And JavaScript is how the house functions, the lights, the doors, how, how things move and interact. And so that is how it would work within a website as well. HTML would be the foundation. CSS would be the aesthetics and the styling and the look. And JavaScript would be the functionality. So we're going to start with HTML. And HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. People will often correct anyone that calls this a programming language. Technically, it's a just a coding, a markup language. We're putting the structure of the browser together, where the title goes, where's, where the paragraphs go, where the images go, or videos go. Um, but it's not actually having any logic or functionality to it. HTML is the foundation of web development, and the fundamentals are essential for building a website. So um, it, it's something that everyone really needs to know uh, before they go into any web development. But it's, it's fairly simple, so it'll be very, fairly easy and quick for us to get through. Uh, this is an example of the structure of HTML code will look like. So here's our HTML open tag and our HTML close tag. We have our header and our body and then specific things within there. Um, so what is a tag and, and what is an attribute? And so there are tags, which I mentioned before. An HTML tag are hidden word, keywords within a web page that define how your web browser must format and display the content. Most tags must have two parts, an opening and a closing part. And so our, our tags are, are specifying if we're posting uh, a video, a paragraph, a header, uh, an image, all sorts of different things. Now the attributes are specific characteristics or properties of those tags, um, such as the width of, or height of an image um, or video. Uh, or if you, you oftentimes need to name uh, a text or a button or an image so that you can when we get into javascript and the functionality and the logic you can access that specified name of the image or the button so that we can uh, have some functionality to that so here at the bottom i have an example of button would be the tag and that has the angle brackets around them and then we have the close tag of button here and then we have the attribute that is the ID equals start button. So this is what we've named our tag button. Now they're all going inside of this first brace, this open tag. Um, the attribute goes inside of it just right next to it with a space. Okay. Um, what is CSS? And so that's our next level here with the aesthetics. That's the CSS is the cascading style sheets with an emphasis on style. CSS describes how HTML elements are to be displayed. So if you want your text to have color, if you want to have your the background of a specific area to be a certain color, if you want to have the whole entire background to be a specific color, if you want it to um, move around or be located in specific spots, shifting the different objects around in so that you can create specific areas for different things is going to be in our CSS, our, our styling. And so um, we will be using both of these uh, hand in hand in order, they both have to be used in all web development. HTML and CSS always, always, always have to be used uh, when creating and designing and formatting a website. Now we can start off and get away with creating just HTML for a little while. And then once we get to a certain point of HTML, it's really not in our best interest to keep going through every single HTML tag we could possibly do. 
So I've chosen these tags right here uh, that we will go through and many of them will be grouped together um, that like these four will automatically populate and we'll get through those really quickly. And many of these are like bold and italics and images um, that we can get through fairly quickly. Uh, now, I also wanted to mention that if you want to get and look at more tags, uh, this w3schools.com, I use it all the time and, and I'll be actually using some of their definitions and different things for, for some of the stuff that I'm going through in this video. And so, uh, yeah, there's a bunch, about 100 tags in HTML that you can that you can choose from. Some of them are more appropriate than others. Some of them are available, but it's more appropriate to use CSS instead. And so they do a great job of specifying uh, all of these. And if you click on these different links, they'll tell you exactly uh, a better definition and an example. So if you ever don't understand something in this video, feel free to go there. But I hope this can assist you in creating um, the web page by, by me showing you how to do it. So before we get started, we're going to need to have a text editor. And so there are a few best text editor to start with in HTML and HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So there's a few right here. Okay. Uh, Adam, Notepad++, Sublime Text Editor. All of these are fairly similar in capabilities. I prefer Sublime Text because it's cross-platform uh, compatible and you're able to use it on Mac, Windows, uh, and Linux. It also allows for plugins and uh, add-ons and so you can add in certain things if you want to make it more complete and more of a IDE version for you. Uh, it is also a freemium, as they say, software where you can download it for free but it also will, you know, it'll ask you every, I don't know, 10 times you save whether you want to uh, purchase the, the paid version. And so we can just ignore that as we go through Sublime Text. So if you just go to Sublime Text Editor and download for Windows, as easy as that. Uh, if you have a different operating system, make sure you download it for that as appropriate. Sublime Text 3, more than likely when your Sublime Text pops up, it'll look something like this. Um, so what I'm going to ask you to do is you're going to open a new file and you're going to need to create a new file in your file explorer. So if you need to look that up, file explorer, there it is. And you can go in to your desktop, your documents, wherever, and create um, a folder. And so we're going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it intro to HTML demo. Okay. And so now I am within my PC desktop intro to HTML demo folder. Now, the reason I created this folder is because we're going to have multiple files that we are going to create. One's going to be an HTML file. Eventually we'll get to a CSS file. And, those, and then more than likely a JavaScript file. Now those allow us so that we can set up the browser and then we can style and, and change the color of the browser and do different things like that. And so if we do new and they don't have HTML as a, f a file type that I can create. So you just need to create a text one and say index.html and so You'll often see index.html on websites because that's just the main uh, default web page to start off. So my default web page is a Google Chrome. And so you will have a blank web page just by doing that. Now, this does not automatically, now that I've created that, it doesn't mean that this is index.html is gonna pop up. I need to see index.html right here. So I need to go to file and I'm not going to just open a file, I'm going to open up an entire folder. And the folder is going to be my intro to HTML demo. And I'm going to open up this whole folder. And I still don't see the index.html. But if you go to view sidebar, show sidebar, now you have the folder, you have one file, and if I keep adding, if I add a CSS file to this, 
which I will eventually, that will also pop in, up in the folder. So now that I have an, a file, an HTML file, index.html, you can call it whatever you want. You can call it homepage.html, and that would work as well. But HTML, if you type in HTML, now Sublime Text knows if you push tab, it'll format a skeleton for you for your HTML. Okay, and so we are about to go through doc type, HTML, what this HTML means, header, title, body, etc., etc. So, a doc type. Um, you want to make sure you always add exclamation point doc type in all caps, tag declaration to your HTML document so that the browser knows what type of document to expect. And so you're, it'll be, you just really have to push HTML tab, but I wanted to explain to you um, this doc type, this right here explains to the computer, to the sublime text, it's going to be an HTML document. Okay. And then you need the HTML tag to say where it starts. And it tells the browser that inside of the open HTML tag and the close HTML tag, this is where your HTML document lies. Okay. And then your title is going to define a title in the browser toolbar and provide a title for the page when it is added to favorites displays a title for the page in the search engine results. So whatever you put in the title, that's what's going to be in the search engine. That's what's going to be at the top of the page. Um, and it just gives it a name to it. And then the body is going to be the stuff inside, inside uh, the HTML document, um, such as text, hyperlink, images, tables, etc, etc, etc. Um, if we go back to our head, I didn't put that on there, but that is going to be what's going to be in the header of our uh, HTML. So inside of the head title, um, I can put intro to HTML demo, and I can kind of change it so you can see if I do control S. I'm going to be using this all the time. You need to remember to save. So you need to remember that you need to save every time you make an edit if you want it to show up for you. Now, if I refresh this intro to HTML demo, it show, shows up as a local or shared file just on my computer. This does not mean anybody can access this. This is just for my specific computer that is able to save this file and access it in the browser. Um, and so our browser is, is created so that it, people can function and test, so developers can test their code and see how it would look up on an actual website. So now we're gonna go into the body and the body um, can be separated from the header if you want different styling with each of these, but you can also just for now, we're gonna put them, put them together. And so um, we've talked about doc type, HTML, title, body. Um, you can also access all of these, all of this, uh, this entire document in the description part of this video. And so here is H1 to H6. These are the header tags uh, and different headings that you can choose from. So one would be, they call the most important heading and six, the least important heading. Basically it just goes, H1 is the largest heading, H6 is the smallest. So if you just put in the tag name and then tab, it will get you started. And so I recommend doing that at any tag that we do. And I did h1 the largest heading h2 h6 smallest heading okay and there's that purchase and you can just cancel no big deal and if i refresh this you see some a couple large headings the second smallest, second smallest, and the smallest. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about the P tag. The P tag stands for a paragraph. Um, in, in the browser, it'll automatically add a space before and after uh, your, your starting and ending P tag. Uh, and similar to kind of how you see in a Word document, the title and then the paragraph are different sizes. So if you're able to section off and it looks a little bit cleaner and nicer, uh, the area that's a paragraph as opposed to a header, uh, it looks a little bit better. You can also edit this uh, 
the, you know, the amount of margins on each side and above and below with CSS. So then we're going to create a P tag, so P and then tab. And then actually what we can put in here is, is there's a way to, that a lot of text editors have to default a fake paragraph. And so it has it in Latin so that you can identify that this is just a default paragraph. There's supposed to be text there, but it's not real text. And so if you do lorem tab, it will automatically populate a fake paragraph for you so that you can see it. So let's go ahead and control S and then refresh. And we have this paragraph. Now, we don't yet have these margins set up um, and we're going to do that in our CSS styling. We just have very basic, basic stuff. And so um, this HTML demo is just kind of a cheat sheet that you can give yourself so that you can be successful going forward. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is an A tag. And our A tab is a hyperlink. Um, so you can add in something and your page will take you to another page. And if you have internet access, you can actually visit that page. And so here you notice some of the default settings uh, the links will appear in the browser will have a blue with an underline as you've seen many times uh, if it's visited it'll underline in purple if it's an active link it is underlined in red and so if we do an a tag a tab it gives us our first attribute if you remember an attribute is additional characteristics or properties of the element of the tag, such as width and height or name or yada, yada, yada. So our href will be the location that we want to go to. So if I wanted to go to google.com, we need to put in https colon slash slash www.google. So it needs to be the exact URL. It cannot just be www. It has to be exactly what you want it to be. So we go back in, we check, we refresh, and we click, and boom, we're there. And if you click and you're on it, you go there. Okay, moving right along. So now we have our bold, italics, and then an image. And so bold, tab. This will be bold text. I, this will be italicized text. And hopefully I spelled that right. If I didn't, oh well. This will be bold text. This will be italicized. Now, here's something that we can go through that can be easy just while you're building. And it's, it's just this BR tag and not all tags have open and close uh, the one that we're going to go through here is just going to be have one tag br one line tag and so if you do br this will do a line break and this will cause your um, your html to give yourself a little break so if i refresh this this will be bold this will be italicized now normally we will be using css to maneuver and move things around otherwise you're your web page gets so sloppy and so hard to deal with. Um, but for now, BR is just fine. And then an image. And so with an image, it will also have an attribute. And this SRC is the source. And so that is going to be your file, your location of, of your image. And so what you first need to do is go back into your file folder. Remember, you can look at the pathway of this folder if you go back into it the intro to html okay this is the folder in on your desktop you have the intro to html in this pc desktop not html cheat sheet whoops that might be what you want to call it but intro to html demo okay and that's how you can access it you want to be able to access this at any time for example we are going to get a picture and I got a whole bunch of pictures up here. Um, doesn't really matter which one you choose. Uh, we can have we can have the Earth picture, and I can copy and 
intro to HTML demo. And then now I can paste earth in there. And and I can just do earth dot dot png. Um, and that that will work for us. And for some reason that was in between the two. So let's give this another line break. Uh, because pushing enter will do nothing but that one line break and I saved I'm control s'ing every time I go back I'm doing control s okay um this line break will will give you the one one more new line that this will be on um but the enters will not do anything okay and so that is one way to do it but you know at some point your folder if you can imagine a website with you know 50 or 60 pictures maybe Wikipedia has tons and tons of different HTML pages because they have a bunch of different web pages uh, as well as a lot of different CSS styling that you might have for one page as opposed to another on some websites you would not want this all in one folder you would want to start making folder a new images folder and then you would want to move earth into your images folder and if you did that and I did control s and then I tried to do this again this wouldn't show up because I have to go into my images folder so I'd have to do images slash earth dot html but you want to make sure that you have your your folder and you know how to access inside of any folder because I eventually I'll make a CSS folder and a JavaScript folder and we'll be entering into these folders and potentially maneuvering the way out of the folder and I'll show you how to maneuver out of the folder when we need to it's a little advanced okay input um, so if we want to enter input into a field and then we want to access that input uh, we need to use the input tag And so input immediately will ask what type of input. Now there's a ton of different types of inputs. Okay, so here on W3 schools, we have button, checkbox, color, date, yada, 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 text. Okay, and so there are tons of different inputs that we can choose from. Um, so if we did text, and we called this uh, input, text just to give it a name you don't really have to give it a name right now um, but you know not a bad idea to give it give it a name we can put type here and so what that will do for us is if we refresh we have input box and it says type here once again this is all on one line and getting a little bit annoying so we can put type here okay um, this will not allow us to enter something in and save it not right now at least um, if you want to save something over a long period of time you will need to have a server and, and have some server side programming knowledge but a little bit later on in JavaScript we will be able to store locally which means as long as you don't refresh the web page, you can store it and do different things with it and, and change change text and change colors and do play even play a game as long as you don't refresh the page. Uh, we, you can create games in, in JavaScript as well. So um, what I'm going to show you now is how to comment in um, HTML. So in order to do that, you make that open caret right here and then dash dash close and so this is how you make the start of your comment and this is how you end your comment here so I'm gonna comment out the image but I still want this is how you create an image I still want that to be available to us here um, but I, I don't want it to show up on the screen because it's really just taking up too much room okay um, 
actually this will be and not and. Um, let's go ahead and add a few more inputs. Um, so let's see, input type submit. Submit can be the name. Submit answer here. Save it. Is that a line break? And let's go ahead and let's go ahead and test. So if we refresh, let's give it our make sure we save after our line break. Refresh. Okay, you see there's a submit button. Now the submit button and the input, they don't do anything right now, um, but they they will eventually. Um, let's see, if we add it in, uh, let's do date. Let's do date, okay. Line break, input, date. We'll just call it date, enter your birthday control s and if you refresh that you see that you can start entering in a date here okay um so like i've said before there are shown you before there's a variety of inputs here available um feel free to take a look through them and, and decide which ones you want to use or test out. Um, but I'm going to keep going here. So when you're creating these inputs, it's actually more proper um, for what we're going to do later on is to put them inside of a form, just like you would fill out a form um, in your everyday life. The tag form allows you to have all of these stored and later on in your web development experience, on the server side, you'll be able to save some of these inputs. Okay, and so um, we'll go ahead and make another comment that says, here is the start of a form, is not visible, but how you can store answers. Okay, and so with that form, I'm gonna keep going, and I'm gonna go ahead and do another line break and then I'm going to do um, a few different things. So now I'm going to create a drop down, uh, kind of like an input, but it's uh, you, you're going to use the select tag. So with the select tag, you're going to have different options. Okay. And these options, these options are going to be needing to have different names to them. So when they are selected and stored in the form, um, they will have a value. And so first we need to know what our question is. So what type of car do you drive? Okay, value equals Ford. Ford. Then I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste a few different options here and just change the name. Toyota, Toyota, Mazda, Mazda. Okay. Now this select needs to have an ID um, so that it, it knows what specific drop down list you're talking about. Otherwise, it could be any drop down list. Later on, we could try to access your so, uh, the select tag, but we need to know which exactly which dropdown because maybe you have ten different dropdowns. So under uh, next to select, you can give it an attribute of an ID, and you can give all your tags an ID, um, and that will give it a a name essentially, a car type. Okay, then if we save that. And we test it here. What type of car do you drive? 
Ford, Toyota, Fiat, Mazda. Okay, and so maybe we want our first value to be blank, so none of them shows up. So our first value is blank. And now you can decide. Okay. So when we're talking about the form tag, um, the form tag is used to create an HTML form for user input um, and have an ability to store some of that information. So really, we probably should have talked about forms first, but there's really not any visual that you can see when you create a form. It's just used for, for more of the back end stuff. And so form elements are different types of input elements like text field, check boxes, radio buttons, submit buttons, and we'll go through a few of these that you guys haven't seen. So um, text field. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, we'll do line break and you can do text area. And you will need to have a rows and a height. Before this, you're gonna need to have a name equals story. And just a space, simple space equals rows equals 10, columns equal 10. So 10 by 10. And you could put something that gets started, write your story here. Tell a story below. And then another line break. Okay, and then once we pop that up and refresh. So this allows for 10 characters across and there's 10 rows. So we probably would want to make that a little bit bigger, more like 30. And cancel that. Just going with the free version here. And there we go. type in there, okay? So that's kind of cool. Now there isn't a way to submit it or anything like that, but you could click a submit button and that would allow um, in the future you to save that information. Now we're gonna make uh, input a checkbox and we're gonna need to call it something. Um, favorite sport, okay? And then we're gonna need to give a value equal to baseball and then we can put baseball and then line break and then we can just kind of copy paste 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 And all of these should be called favorite sport. So they are saved in the same location. But we can change the value of each to football, basketball, soccer, soccer. And if you save that, we have different options right there. Okay, so now that our web page is getting a little crowded down here at the bottom, I want to give it a little bit more room. I'm going to do something that, you know, normally we're not going to do this in this way, but this is um, how you could do some CSS, some styling inside of your HTML without creating um, a CSS file. Now it's more proper to do a CSS file because uh, it allows you to reuse that code. It's easier to manage and organize things. Uh, otherwise your, your website will get scrambled. But since we're just doing this one time in here, I'm gonna do it this way. So 
I created a, a paragraph and the attribute is going to be a style. And so we're going to specify that this style is going to be a margin and bottom. And we're going to push this bottom about 300 pixels. And so when I save that and I go back in um, and refresh it, you can see that this scroll bar is a lot easier and this can come up to the center. So now it'll always push 300 pixels. You could even do like 500 pixels, but it'll push it down and give you empty space of 300 pixels. We could change the color of that. We could do all sorts of stuff if we wanted to. But if you just leave this at the bottom of your code, that'll help make things a little bit easier for me at least to show you and for you to see. Okay, and so the next thing we're going to do is do another line break. And let's keep these a little bit organized. And so then we're going to do an input type of radio. And this is going to be our uh, name is going to be uh, true or false. And the value is going to equal true. And we can say true here. And then input type radio name true or false value equals false false br save that refresh okay now we have these circular buttons and notice that since these are the same name there can only be one choice selected now, if I gave this true false one, saved, refreshed, I could select both of these because they're two different options, two different selections. They're basically two different radio groupings, but this naming them the same, group them together and make it so that you can only have one or the other true or false okay um, and you know you feel free to say what's your favorite sport and um, I like HTML and feel free to be honest if you like it or not so hopefully you're liking it and that's true for me I do like HTML um, then I can always give myself another line break. Now, when we organize this, we're not going to be using line breaks nearly as much with our CSS, and we can use a line break for what your favorite sport is. But um, in order for me to teach you that, I need to start with with CSS, and you know that's why these HTML and CSS go hand in hand. But we have to start with our HTML first. Okay, so give myself a line break, and we'll keep going through. Um, and and that's enough inputs for now. You guys kind of get the idea. You need to have a type, a name, and a value. Okay, and so um, a button. So this button, this is a clickable button. Um, inside a button element, you can put content, text, and image. So you can have some an image that you click on, and that will be a button or do something. In our JavaScript, we'll, we'll do it um, a little lesson where we uh, change the image, change what image gets shown when you click on it. Um, maybe you can change the size of an image when it gets, gets clicked on. There's all sorts of things you can do. You can also click on text to make it appear, disappear, um, and, and do different things, as well as just clicking on a, a physical-looking submit button or click here button. Um, but inside a button element, you can put content, text, or images. This is the difference between the element and buttons created with the input element. So the fact that you can put it on different things, you can name it your own thing, um, as opposed to just the submit button that you can use in the input. Okay, so then we can do button, and we can have a button ID equal to click here button. And let's put quotes around that. It's kind of a pain if you don't put quotes up click here and if you save it 
that will be very simple. We can refresh. We have a button that you can just click here, and that'll actually take you to the top of the screen. But uh, you can put whatever you want in there. But we just put click here. Um, also, later on, and when we you know CSS, you can really format this button to be however you want to look. Um, so that's that's kind of a cool thing. It's a, it's much more customizable than the input submit uh, like we did up here. This would just be your basic submit button that you guys have seen on pages. Okay. Okay. Now, label. Um, the label tag defines a label for, for several elements. Okay. Um, for attribute of the label tag should be equal to the ID attribute of the related elements to bind them together. So label is just something I want you to be aware of. Um, oftentimes your selections, your options on um, different things like our checkboxes might have labels attached to it. And that allows so that if, they, if the user clicks on the, the actual word or the text, um, you, it would also work as it, as opposed to just clicking on the actual checkbox or the radio button. If they clicked on true or false, the actual text, it would work for them as well. Um, it's it's something that's that's important uh, more on the server side again, um, but I just wanted you to be aware of it. Um, but we're going to go ahead and, and kind of jump past that for now. Um, ordered list. So basically, this is just a numbered list. Uh, it can either be numerical or alphabetical. And it's going to use the li tag to define each list item. And then there's the ul, which is an unordered list, basically a bulleted list. And this, you'll also use the li tag to, um, to, to say which list item we're talking about. So we're going to go through all three of these all together right now. So um, let's go ahead and comment this as ordered and unordered. Okay, so first we can have an, let's do an ordered list. And I like to separate it out so it's really clear and easy to see. List item, and we'll put which item will be number one. List item, that'll be number two. List item, list item, okay. And let's see, what would be a good ordered list uh, directions? Okay, go down first street and turn right at the light. Five, five, walk for three blocks. And take a left on to Linden Ave. Walk one block and turn right on First Street. Building is on your right one half block block down. Okay, so that's the best directions I can I, I can make up on the spot. If you refresh. All right, directions. First, go down the first street. Go down first street and turn right at the light. Walk for three blocks, then take a left on Linden Ave. Walk one block, and then turn right on First Street. Oh, man, I got this all messed up. So let's call this First. And let's call this Second. Now you save and refresh. Go down First Street and turn right at the light. Walk for three blocks, then take a left on Linden Ave. Walk one block and turn right on Second Street. Building is on your right, a half block down. Okay, sure, that's good enough for me. Okay, so that's an example of an ordered list. And then you would have 
the unordered list ul list item um, and what what can we do for an unordered list let's see first let's give it a line break grocery list sure bread eggs milk cheese chips and pasta save refresh grocery list and we have a few things on the grocery list okay and notice that your there is a little bit of a of a break between the line break basically between your title and the different options that you choose from okay so now we're going to go ahead and make a table and there's a lot of different different aspects of the table so um, the table tag defines an HTML table uh, consists of the table element and one or more TR TH and TD elements and we'll go through all of those a more complex HTML table may also include caption colon colon group T head T foot T body so I'm going to do um, some of the main ones kind of wrap them all up into one uh, quick example um, T header uh, tag is used to group header content in an HTML table. Um, it's used so that your table can have a specific header. This is used so your table can have a specific body and your table can have a specific footer. Uh, the TR, TH, and TD, it defines a table row. Uh, and then the TH defines a table header and defines a table cell, TD. So we can create table. And within that table, we can have a T head. And so these will be all the headers going across and they will have a specific default. I believe they're all bold and centered. Um, so we can have, let's see, a TR, a table row. In this first row, we'll have one TH, one table header, which will be um, first name. Have another th last name and third th which will be salary okay and so that'll be the end of the first row and the table header t body will have a table row will be its own row and the table headers will bold and center and we want it to just be a regular cell so that'll be TD and the first rows TD might be Mike and then last name Jones salary 300,000 okay still on the body we might have Another person, John Smith. Salary, 100000 And then uh, outside of the body, we might have a T foot. And that T foot will have a row. Those will also have cells. And so the first cell is going to be blank. The second cell is going to say um, total salary. And the third row is going to say 400,000. Okay, so 300,000 plus 100,000 will be 400,000. And then control S. And you have the headers with a first name, a last name, and a salary, all bold, all centered. And then you have this cell, this cell, and the values here. And that's how you make a table. Um, next, we're going to take a look at the iframe. 
Uh, iframe tag specifies an inline frame. Uh, inline frame is used to embed another document within the current HTML document. If I go on and go to com slash coding club, and I select oh, snake game in JavaScript. We copy embed code. And we put that into iframe. Paste. It looks like they're doing it all for us. So all we need to do is put iframe. Uh, it's got the tag open and close to here. Uh, we don't need to close it again. And I don't think we need to end quotes there either. So um, basically, you just have to, for YouTube, you just need to go on and copy embed code and then paste it into your, <laughs> in your sublime text. And We got it. Okay, right there. You can play it from your web page. Kind of cool. Okay. Um, now we're going to talk about divs, and and so divs is a huge, huge, huge part of your HTML and your CSS. So. Basically, div tag defines a division or section in an HTML document. And so um, the div element is often used as a container for other HTML elements to style them with CSS or to perform tasks with JavaScript. So whether it's JavaScript or HTML, um, when you create a div, it allows you to specify you could either specify, you know, this entire table, but maybe I want to specify half of this table or just part of this list, or I want to, um, you know, do something specific and, and section it off. You can easily do that with with your div, and so uh, you don't want to overuse your div. It can it can easily all of a sudden your your code can get a little bit jumbled with div tags, but um, it is important to, to try to use them when appropriate. So um, just for an example, if I wanted to, oh, I have this in the table. Let's get this out of the table. Let's see what the, I'm wondering why it was above everything else. So hopefully that'll now be below. There you go. Okay. So if I wanted to um, give a margin around this video, um, you know, one way I could do it is adding, uh, you know, an ID or something to it. But if I have multiple things in there, let's say I have, let's say I have also um, another video. Let's say I have two of the same video. Okay, who knows? Okay, but I want to group these together and put a border around this. So if I put a div. I can specify these two and section these two together, um, and they're they're kind of divided off. Um, and then you can give them a class name or an ID. But um, once we start our CSS, you will be able to customize. So let's say kind of like we did down here, uh, but this is not again not the proper way to do it. But I just wanted to show you an example. Um, let's say a uh, border. Red, solid, five pixels. Okay. And now I have two videos, red border, solid, five pixels around both of them. Okay. So you can see that I can start separating these out and do kind of whatever I want with them. Um, if I put a line break, the div will automatically edit to how I have it set up. Now the width isn't specified here, and so that kind of throws it off too, but um, you can kind of see how, how a div could be used. Okay, and so the last thing we're gonna talk about is the link tag, and the link tag defines a link between a document and an external resource. The link tag is used to link to external style sheets. 
okay? And so this is what's going to allow us to access um, our CSS. And so our link tag, we're gonna scroll all the way up to the top and we're going to link and this href is kind of like the href here, how this links, hyperlinks to Google. You can also href reference a file that we have in our folder. Now, right now, we have an images folder. We need to add a new CSS folder inside the CSS folder a new style.css. Now, we will access first the folder. Be very careful. So we have the CSS folder. You have to access the folder first and then style.css and then save it. If you do not have a folder, you want to choose not to be organized. I don't know why you would, but you would not put CSS slash style.css if you don't have the folder. You would just put if this style.css file was right below index.html, you would not put CSS slash because the CSS slash that you see right here is accessing the folder and then accessing the style.css file. Okay, and then once we go into our style.css, quickly we could put um, a body and then we could do um, background color equals gray and then you save and since it's linked correctly here you need to also save both the HTML and the CSS if there are circles instead of X's that's a good sign that you have not saved so see I took took out the semicolon and the circle shows up but then when I save it goes back away and then it shows back up when I make a change and then I save and it goes away. Okay, so now I've saved and so when I refresh, I have a gray background. And that'll do it for this intro to HTML video. Uh, in the next video, we'll be using CSS and adding to the styling of the website. This will be another video that will get you the basics of CSS and just so you can get started um, by adding color to your background, adding images to your background, formatting your website so it can be moved and, and manipulated how you want it and much more. So if you enjoyed the video, I really appreciate a like and subscribe. Um, likes really help promote the video so other web developers can learn from this video as well. Um, and don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching.